Hey everybody, this is Jamie, and what I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you how to make elevators in Game Salad. We're going to set up vertical and horizontal elevators both. I guess the horizontal you could really call more of a moving platform, like the orange platform there on screen, moving side to side, and the vertical elevators move up and down. So what you're going to have when we're done with this tutorial is this little green character is controlled with basic movement controls. It just has a right and left movement and then jump if you press the space bar. So you can hop on these elevators and you can keep moving on them or jump while you're on them. And when, you, when I get on the horizontal one, if I let go of the keys, the character moves along with the elevator. And of course I can move on it and also jump while I'm on the platform. And then this vertical one works just like the first one. It'll take me up to the upper level up there. I can hop off, run back over to the beginning, and I'll be where we started at. And there we go, back to where we started. So let's get into this, and I'll show you how to set these elevators up. When you download the source files, you're going to have the fully working, finished sample for you to tear apart and get into. And what that's going to have is in the player, like I said, has some basic movement control set up. It's going to have gravity. This is an accelerate behavior on the main character to give it gravity. There's a collide behavior, so it collides with anything solid, which is basically everything else on screen, except for one zone tagged as a die zone. And that really has nothing to do with the elevators. It just conveniently resets the scene if you fall off the bottom of the screen. That's all. Then this floor is basically nothing. It's just set up as a floor to collide with. And then there is this die or dead zone, which again has no behaviors. But it's just down here at the bottom of the screen. If you touch this white area, that's going to reset the scene start it back over again for you. So let's set up the vertical elevators first. So the first thing we want to do for that is add a new attribute, a game level attribute, and that needs to be real. I'm going to call that player Y. In the vertical elevator actor, we're going to need to add a few attributes here as well. I'm going to add two real attributes first. I'm going to call this one my max. I'm going to make another one. Call it my min. And I'm going to make an integer attribute. Call that my speed. And what these attributes are going to do, this my max is going to control the height, the highest point that the elevator can go to on screen. The my min is going to control the minimum or the lowest point it can reach on screen. And then the my speed will control the speed that it moves between those two points. So now that we have those attributes set up, let's put some behaviors in here and get this platform moving on screen. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to set up the platform on the far left here first. We'll get that moving up and down and test it with the player. And then we'll set the one on the far right here that goes up a little bit higher. We'll set that one up as well. So to get this first one set up, we've got to add some behaviors to this. The first thing we'll want to do is get it moving up and down. So I'm going to create a rule, and this rule I'm going to say move down. In this rule, I want to check when the attribute position y, so when this elevator's position y is greater than or equal to this new attribute we set up right here, my max. So when it's greater than or equal to vertical elevator, 
my max, I'm going to want to move the platform down. And I'm going to do that by using an interpolate behavior. And what we want to interpolate, we want to interpolate this actor's position y to the my min attribute we just set up. So I'm going to select my min. And then the duration of that, we want to set that to be my speed. So let's set that up. So what's going to happen here is when this platform is at its maximum height, it's going to trigger this event because its position is greater than or equal to its maximum height. And then it's going to interpolate its position back down to its minimum position at the speed of my speed that we've set up over here. Now, to move the platform back up, we're going to want to copy this rule that we've already set up. I'm going to call this move up. And then we just want to make a couple changes here. We still want to check for the self position y, but we want to check when that is less than or equal to. And we want to change my max to my min. And then we want to interpolate its self position y back up to the my max. So let's change that. And then we're going to leave the speed the same so it moves up and down at the same speed. So now let's set up the numbers in these max, min, and speed. And the way we're going to do that is you want to do that in the instance of this actor. So I'm going to delete this for now just so you can see what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to drag this actor that we just set these base behaviors up in. These are all zero and these are the new behaviors we just set up. I'm going to drag that on screen. I'm going to put it here so I can get its width. So like that I just dragged it over. So let's set up its minimum distance first. And I want that to be down a little bit lower than this platform so the player has time to get on and off. So I'm going to say this looks like a good spot. Double click it and check its position. So its Y position, I'm going to update that to exactly 36. Just so it's easier to work with. So now that we know its minimum position is going to be 36, I'm going to update this instances, my min, to 36. Let's go back and move that to its upper or maximum position. So again, I want it to be a little bit above these platforms where the player is going to be getting on and off. Let's check that. So I'm going to say that's 443. And update its my max to 443. And I know from play testing this that I like the speed of 7. So I'm going to put a 7 in there. Now I know I want this elevator to start from the bottom and move up to the top. So I'm going to change its starting position right here to its minimum position, which is 36. So let me change this to 36. Let's take a look at that on screen just so you can see it. It moved it back down to the bottom. So let's preview this now, and this platform should be moving up and down all on its own. So there it is. It started at the bottom, and it's moving up towards the top. Let's make sure when it gets to its max, it moves back down, which it did. Now I'm going to jump on top of this, and don't be alarmed because it's not going to work right yet. We don't have it all the way set up. But you can see, like, weird stuff happens. The player kind of falls through and things don't work quite right yet. So let's make that work correctly. To do that, we're going to need to add another rule to this vertical elevator. 
I'm going to close up these two move behaviors or these two move rules so we can have a little more screen space. And like I said, I want to create a new rule. I want to move this up above so it checks for this first. And what this is going to check for, it's going to check if the player touches this platform, it's going to lock the player onto the top level of this platform so the player is always locked to the top of the elevator. So what we want to check for, the first thing we want to check for is if this actor receives the event overlaps or collides with actor of type player. We want to check for that. And then I also want to check if the key spacebar is up. And the reason I'm checking for that is I want the player to be able to still jump while they're on this platform, not just move side to side. And if the space bar is up, that means the player is not jumping. And when the player is not jumping, I want to constrain that player to the top of the platform. So I'm going to drag in a constrain attribute. And what we want to constrain is this game level, player Y, and we want to constrain that to the vertical elevators, position Y, plus 38. And let me tell you why I chose the number 38. If you check this platform, the size of the platform is 26, so half of that is 13. Let me go to the player. If you check the size of the player, the full height is 50, so half of that is 25. So I've taken half the height of the player and half the height of the elevator, added those together, and that gives you 38. So if you had elevators or players of different sizes than mine in this tutorial, you're going to want to update this number accordingly. Just remember, it's half of the size of the elevator plus half of the size of your character. Now we do want to add something to the otherwise section here. What we want to add to the otherwise is if the player does press the space bar, we want to let them jump. And to let them jump, this platform is basically going to have to let go of that player. So to do that, I'm going to add a new rule. I'm going to drag this rule up into the otherwise section. And I want to have this rule, again, check and make sure that the player, or that this elevator, is colliding with the player. And now in this case, if the key space is down, we want to let go of the player. And the way we let go of the player is I'm going to copy this constraint attribute down here and just make a slight update to it. All we have to change here is change this 38 to a 39. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to put the player one pixel up above this platform so it won't constrain to it any longer. And then you'll be able to jump. But we do have to make one adjustment to the player setup before that's going to work. So let's go into the player and make some edits here. We want to change the way this gravity is done. So what I'm going to do is add a new rule to this. And because I had give me gravity selected, when I added the new rule, it put the give me gravity right in there to start with, which is great. That's almost what we want. But what I really want with this is I want to move this give me gravity down into the otherwise section. Because what we're going to do up here is I'm going to watch for when this player overlaps or collides with a vertical elevator. And when it does touch a vertical elevator, we're going to constrain the attribute of the player's position y to that game level 
player Y that we just used in this vertical elevator. So let's take a look at this just so it's clear to you what's going on. When the player touches this elevator and the space bar is not pressed so the player is not jumping, this constraint attribute is going to keep player Y constrained to self position Y plus 38 and that will keep the player standing at the very top level of this platform. They'll still be touching it and because they're touching it, the self position Y of the player is going to be constrained to that game level player Y. But if they press the space bar, this rule here is going to let them go because it's no longer going to be actually touching this platform. When it's self position Y plus 39, there's going to be one pixel in between the player and the platform, so it's not touching. And when it's not touching, that's when the player can fall or jump or do whatever else they want to do. So let's test that out. So let me jump down there and test this out. And that definitely did not work like it should. Something weird happened, and I know what happened. There's one critical thing I forgot. It is no behaviors, it's no actions. But what it is, if you go to your scene and go to your layers, what you absolutely have to make sure of is the player is on a layer above the vertical elevators. If the player is below the vertical elevators, it acts weird like that. It doesn't work correct. So now if I preview this, it should work fine. Let me jump on that. Now I land on it properly. I can jump. I can move side to side. And I can hop off of it. So now it's working correctly. That layering is critical in this instance. It's not necessarily always critical in Game Salad. But in this case, well, in all cases, actions are fired from the lower levels to the top levels. And because this vertical elevator is essentially controlling the player's Y position when the player is on it, you want to make sure this number gets updated before the player has to make any moves. So the vertical elevators have to be on a layer below the player. So that's really it for the vertical elevator. Let's get that other one set up just to get it working since it's on screen. And where is it? It's up at the top. So let's delete that. Add a new one from scratch just again so we can see what's going on and uh, make sure we understand how to do this. I'm going to start it down here at the bottom just so I can see its width make sure where to place it. Let me change its width just a little bit. That looks good for a minimum position. Let me double check that. So its position I'm going to make that 37. So let me make its my min 37. I'm just going to set this at a speed of 7 just like the other one. They don't have to be the same. The lower you make this number, the faster it will go. So obviously the higher you make this number, the slower it will go. Let's set up its maximum position. Right about there should be good. So let's make that about 690. I'm going to make it to my max, that number, 690. And let's preview that. So there it is. It's now moving top to bottom. This one's moving bottom to top. And now we'll need to make this one move side to side. Just for the sake of argument, let me make this move really fast, just so you can see how that my speed will adjust that. I'm going to make this, let's make it 1. 
so it'll move super fast. So there it goes. It's really flying up and down really quickly now. I'm sure you wouldn't want it to move that quickly in game most likely, but just so you can see how adjusting that number adjusts the speed at which that moves. I'm going to change that back to 7 so it's a little more reasonable. And let's move on to the horizontal moving platforms. We'll need to add another game level attribute for that. That's going to be another real attribute. I'm going to call that H Elevator X. And then we'll definitely need to make some edits to this horizontal elevator because there's nothing in it right now. There's no attributes, no nothing. So in these horizontal moving platforms, we want to set up the my max, my min, and my speed, just like in the vertical ones. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember there are two of them are real attributes. The my max and the my min. And then the my speed, that can be an integer. And what we're going to do, we're going to use those same numbers just like we did for moving top to bottom. It's just going to be a maximum distance to the right and a minimum distance to the left and the speed at which that platform should move between those two points. So to make life easier, I'm going to go into the vertical elevator. I'm going to copy this move down and move up. I'm going to paste those into the horizontal elevator here. And I'm going to get some warnings because all of these attributes need to be reestablished. So I'm just going to continue that. This is, going to, of course, not going to move down and up. It's going to move right and left. So to move right, we now want to check its self position X. So when the horizontal elevator Position X is less than or equal to the my min. We want to interpolate the position X to my max. And then the speed we want to use for that, of course, is my speed. Now we just need to update this move left accordingly. So we want to check the position X again when that's greater than or equal to my max. We want to interpolate the position x to my min and then we want the speed to be my speed. Right there. Now we need to set up these values just like we did for the vertical elevators. So let's go back to our game. I'm going to delete this off of here drag a new one on, put it right about there. I'm going to make it just a little bit wider like the one we deleted was. So this is going to be the minimum distance, the distance to the left. Let's double click that, check its position X, let's say 425. So the minimum, my min, is going to be 425. Let's check its maximum distance. Drag that over to right about there. Let's check that. So that is, we'll say 695. And 7 seems to have been working out fine for a speed. So let's put 7 in there for now. Let's preview that and see if that platform's moving right. 
So it's not, it seems to be stuck. And what we want to check for is this my max, we rounded up to 695. So I want to start this exactly at 695. Now let's preview that again. There we go. So now it's moving. And actually it's moving a little bit slow. So let's update that. Let's make that move just a little bit faster. Let's try six. See how that looks. That's a little bit better. It's still a little bit slow, but it's really not that important right now because we're not play testing a, a game for any kind of real qualities here. It's just a tutorial. But you can see it moves to its maximum and minimum distance. Now, if I were to run down there and hop on top of that right now, it's not going to work exactly correct yet. Let me get on there and show you what happens. I can get on it, but if I let go of my keys now, I don't move with it. It moves underneath me, and if I let it go, I'll fall off. So what we want to do to really complete that horizontal moving elevator is make me stick to it when I'm not pressing any keys. You can see I can move on it just fine and I can jump. That works great, but most people really expect to be stuck to the elevator when it's moving or the moving platform. So we want to make that happen. And to make that happen, we want to go back and edit the prototype. Definitely don't want to accidentally edit the instance. You want this to definitely happen in the prototype. So let's go back to that. And what we want to do, first thing we need to do is constrain an attribute. And the attribute we need to constrain is that game level attribute we just set up, H elevator X. I want to constrain that to the position X of this elevator. And then we're going to use that back in the player to stick the player to the top of that elevator. So let's go back to our player, close up some of these, and we're going to add a new rule here. What this rule is going to do, let me move it up here, and what this rule is going to do, it's going to stick the player to the top of the horizontal moving platforms. So the first thing we want to check for is if the player overlaps or collides with the H elevator. And we only want that player to stick if you're not moving it, if you're not pressing left, right, or jumping. So we want to add a couple more conditions here. If the key right is up, that means you're not moving right. And if the key left is up, that means you're not moving left. So you are touching the elevator, but you're not moving right and you're not moving left. And you don't really have to check for jump because if you do press jump, you're no longer going to be touching the elevator. You'll be jumping up in the air. So as long as you're not moving, we want the player to be stuck to that elevator. So it's going to take two behaviors to make that happen. The first one is going to be a change attribute. And to make this change attribute work correctly, we need to add an attribute here to the player actor. This attribute is going to be a real attribute. And I'm going to call it X offset. So we're going to change player X offset. And we're going to change that to that game level attribute H elevator X minus player position X. So remember, the horizontal elevator is always keeping its X location constrained to H elevator X. And that's the center of that elevator platform. So we're going to take that number minus the player's current position X, and that's going to tell us how far away from the center of the elevator platform that the player is. That's what this X offset is. Then we need to add a constrain attribute, and now we want to constrain the player's position X 
we want to constrain that again to the game h elevator x minus this offset that we just established. So minus player x offset. So that's as long as you're not moving but you're touching the platform, it's going to keep you locked at that same offset from the center of the horizontal moving platform. So let's check that out. That should work just fine now. Let me get down there. Just made it. Run over it. And I'm letting go of my key now. And you'll see my player is staying stuck to the platform. I can move around on it and let go. And I stay stuck. I can jump. And when I land, I'm stuck again. And that's it. That's working perfectly. Oops, I missed my edge there. But you can see I now move around up and down on the vertical elevators and also on the horizontal elevators. So that's it. That is how to make vertical and horizontal elevators in GameSalad. I hope that helps you out and have fun making games.